Republic, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. our full sports scholar athletes. These students perform with distinction on the field and in the classroom and are very deserving of the scholar athlete team award they have received. Besides their excellent sportsmanship, they achieved high marks in their courses. I would like to ask Mr. Jack Major, our district athletic director, to come to the podium and help us recognize our honorees tonight. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. Good evening, Madam President, Board of Education members, and fellow Newburgh and Large City School District stakeholders. The New York State Public High School Athletic Association honors select student athletes and their teams three times a year with the Scholar Athlete Team Award. This award is given to teams that have a predetermined number of student athletes that combine together as a team to average 90 or higher with their grade point average. This fall, we had six of our eight teams qualify for this prestigious award, and our football team averaged 89.853, missing the award by 15 hundredths of a point. At this time, I'd like to have the coaches that are in attendance come to the front of the room to assist with the distribution of our certificates. very well. <laughs> the first team to be recognized is our boys cross country team coached by Robin Joel. The number of student athletes required in that particular sport is seven. That particular team had a cumulative grade point average of those seven student athletes of 90.013. The seven students for that team are Boyd Grant and, and you folks if you are in attendance please come forward to get your certificate. John Kennedy, John Cardina, Glenn Rafferty, Shay Ratinsky, <laughs> Joshua Totke, and Christopher Baines. <laughs> I'm especially proud of, of the cross country team because I'm a former cross country coach here at Newburgh. Boys and girls, I'll take the other team. As always, we have a little photo op, so we'll take a moment of your time if we can. up for everyone cross right. girls cross country will be next <laughs> Girls Cross Country is next. It's coached by Blair Bailo. Again, the number for cross country is seven. Uh, Jessica Espinosa, Margaret Reed, 
Deidre Ryan, Gianna Frontera, Raquel Rodriguez Asher, Bradley Okoto, and Kaylee Forrester. Someone who always has his name mispronounced, I do apologize if I do uh, mispronounce your name. Can we get the average, oh, please? Yes. Pardon me. Long day today. 90.061. Because of student confidentiality laws, we, we certainly can't indicate the individual grade point averages, but I can tell you that there were some that were very, very high. For our coaches, as you prepare the next board, is girls volleyball. was 91.682, and those athletes are Elizabeth Clark, Amanda Ludo, Margaret Martin, Ariel Maley, Samantha Malarkey, Danielle Gosta, Bridget Martin, and Jenna Ramos. Soccer is next. Dave Doolin is our coach for girls soccer, and Jennifer Marin is here to accept the awards for the girls. There were 12 girls that were required to uh, average above 90 to, for the team, and they did average 94.127. Very, very impressive. Uh, the student athletes were Alexa DeSantis, Adriana Moncadam, Emily Hardling, Jamie Hectus, Courtney Pelagi, Victoria Colati, Sarah Cordes, Fidad Giron, Diana Marquez, Ashley Torres, Sarah Colati, and Alexandra Danker. Yeah. Our next sport is girls tennis. Now there are a couple of caveats here. There is a minimum number, or there are a minimum number of students. Uh, in girls tennis case, it was nine. However, if you have more than nine students who average at 90 or above, all of the additional student athletes are awarded a certificate as well. And in the case of girls tennis, they did have 10 that average 90 or above. 
Uh, their cumulative grade point average was 94.660. Uh, the student athletes from, oh, I'm sorry, and Gina Scaduto is our coach. I'm sorry, Gina. I've never lived that one down, I'm sorry. Uh, our coaches are Bridgetta Anderson, Brill Anderson, Ivana Patil, Brianna Schaefer, Sarah Fishman, Julia Zambito, Patricia Spreer, Anna Fleckenstein, and Priscilla Salazar. because they are involved in competition in other sports. Uh, for example, a basketball team is, is in a blue middle class there. It's like my family well, pictures. Really that. Really and they had 17. And not only did they have 17, but they averaged 95.05. Coach Balo, I don't know if you can feel it within the packet there, but within that packet, the state recognizes any team that has above a 95 average with not only the individual certificates, but with a special pin that acknowledges their contribution toward uh, academic excellence within New York State. So each of the individual student athletes will receive that particular pin as well. So congratulations, and here are our students. <laughs> Miller, Alexander Remack, Emma Horty, Ashley Germain, Nita Pablo, Julia Sager, Allison Vila, Bana Hadid, Katherine Anderson, Brittany Fries. Jenna York, Haley De Benedictus, Yaro Sterbuk, Alexa Sager, Dana Ologio, uh, Claire Williams, and Emily Hovey.
as I have the pictures available to me, I'd like to let everyone know that we do have two new display cases that have been recently put into the lobby of Newburgh Free Academy main uh, campus uh, building. And we'll be displaying both memorabilia of our teams from beginning in 1890 all the way through the current uh, academic year. And I'll make sure that these pictures get on display there as soon as possible. Uh, one last thing I'd like to do before I turn the floor to Mr. Pizzo is to have all of the student athletes who are recognized please stand at this time so we can acknowledge you one last time. coaches, and most importantly, the parents. Thank you, Mr. Pisa. Thank you, Mr. Major, and uh, we're very proud of our athletes. We're very proud of all of our students. Uh, I, I tell everybody out in the county when I go out to the superintendent's meetings that uh, Newburgh, Newburgh's goldbacks are the greatest, and we'll take anybody on anytime. <laughs> Next is our capital project update. <coughs> there he is. <laughs> Why don't we uh, just wait a couple minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, capital project. Thank you. Um, I took the liberty prior to the meeting to uh, put your project update at each of your. Uh, Locations. The report that we've provided for this month is similar to the format that we've used in the previous months. Um, there's a brief overview memo, and then we have tabs that include information from each of our three texts. A couple things I want to cover this evening. Um, Generally speaking, the punch list work that had been ongoing is progressing very well. There's been a significant amount that's been done over the course of the last uh, month and a half. Uh, there are other activities and work that's scheduled to be completed um, yet this month and into February, and then some final items will be completed during the March break. Um, with regard to the active projects, which are really um, Guinea Ave, work progresses well there. We are substantially complete with the B-Wing K-8 renovation work. Uh, we're currently working on the finishing touches there. The contractors will be moving all of their tools and equipment out. The floors will be waxed, the space will be cleaned, and then the new furnishings will be brought in uh, within the next couple of weeks. You'll notice in this month's report, um, in each one of the architect's sections, there are some concept plans that have been prepared um, that are the result of a meeting with the superintendent, the board president, and Mr. Velez back in early January, where each of the architects was asked to look at uh, the various buildings that they have worked on and come up with some initial concept sketch with regard to how we might um, do some things to enhance building access and security. I'm not going to go through each of those, but these are their, their initial thoughts. We had a follow-up meeting today with uh, the superintendent, board president, Mr. Galez, um, Mr. Young, Ms. Howard, um, and the architects, and we went through the concept plans that have been prepared and had a follow-up discussion with regard to some of the things that are important to them and some things they'd like um, the district to consider as they look into potentially doing something to upgrade some of the security. Um, what you'll find in most of these, the work that's been, this initial work that's been done, is similar to the improvements that have already been made at Meadow Hill, Temple Hill, and the work that we're going to be doing at GAMS. Um, we started a program back in 2006 where we were trying to uh, control exterior access into the buildings. We actually have doors that are prepped for card access at several of the schools. And part of what we accomplished at Meadow Hill and Temple Hill was a buzzer system, so anyone coming into the building would need to be buzzed in after hours. So these initial sketches really 
use that as a, as a starting point, and certainly given the events of the past several months, there are other things that need to be um, investigated and evaluated, and this is really that first step. Uh, so these uh, sketches are really there for your, for your use as you continue your own dialogue with regard to other things that you may look at with regard to building access and security. The um, tab that includes the change order resolution, which is the uh, fifth tab, I believe, if you could go to that and then go to the back three pages of the SAML report, there's a condition that was encountered um, last Friday. There's a soffit above one of the exit doors I wanted to bring to your attention this evening. Um, there's some work that is in need, um, repair that needs to be done there. There's some photos of a condition that was discovered underneath the plaster soffit over that exit door by the gym. Again, it's the back of the sample section. There's um, four photographs that show the plaster as it existed before they started doing the soffit work. And then a piece of that plaster came down, and you can see the condition of that roof area. Uh, we've asked and instructed the architect to have the contractor provide pricing to um, make these repairs. The last thing that I wanted to talk about this evening is in the last tab. There's an update with regard to the project closeout and final cost reports. Uh, there's a narrative and a summary that's been provided for the projects of the $50 million of the first referendum. And as you'll see, uh, there was one final cost report submitted last year. There are two that remain um, active. And once those are done, then all of the final cost reports for the $50 million referendum um, will, be, will have been submitted. Uh, with regard to the second referendum, there's a listing of the final cost reports that have been submitted to date. Uh, there's a listing of the projects that we anticipate we'll be ready to close out in 2013. And our goal is to submit as many of these as possible to the State Education Department. Although of this group, not all of these final cost reports are due by June 30th of this year. But our goal is to get as many of these done and submitted as we can. And in the final group, there are the projects that are still under construction, uh, such as Guinea Ave. And then we have the additional projects that are currently at SED for permitting. And that would be the projects at NFA, the uh, additional projects at GAMS, and then the Foster Town and Heritage projects. So those projects obviously will not be closed out until that work has been completed. The goal right now, pending approval of SED, is to bid and award that work and try to have that work substantially completed this summer. And our goal would be to have those projects closed out and final cost reports would be submitted in 2014 when they're due. So the goal would be to have all of those um, documents done and submitted to the state, and then we would continue to work with Mr. Purcell and his office to assist when necessary as it relates to any other filings that are required once the district starts to apply for its building aid. Is that a, a brief Questions for, for Mr. Damon? Yes, Mr. Lawson. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that you were in the process of, of getting some designs for the, the added security issues. They're just the concept plans that have been provided in your update. Right. Is there any plan for, or do you know when we might see a sort of overall plan or concept or idea about what's going to happen with respect to security issues in the schools? I think the intent with this initial effort with the architect was to provide kind of a starting point for some starting point for some discussions that may be held with the superintendent and the board and this is to provide just a general overview that would be similar to what's been done in the other buildings to date this is a place to start and i think as we get more feedback and we understand what the district would like to try to accomplish then we could um, develop plans more fully and provide some cost estimates if you will with regard to what different types of improvements might entail Other questions? Thank, Thank you, Mr. Damon. Thank you, Thank you, Jerry. Madam President, that concludes our recognitions and uh, Mr. Damon's report section of the uh, agenda. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. <laughs> our next item on the agenda is public discussion and comment on agenda items. Anyone wishing to speak on agenda items, please step to the podium and give your name and address. Um, 
the next items on the agenda are from the board president. First, I have a resolution to suspend bylaw number 0130A. It will be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby suspends bylaw number 0130A, which requires two readings prior to adoption or amendment of a policy to allow policy number 5201 secondary course credit to be amended in one meeting, in one reading. And I have a motion. So Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Trokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. My first item is the adoption of policy number 7433, school safety <coughs> plans, teams, and policy number 5201, secondary schools course credit. Can I have a motion? So Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard, yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Lewinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. My next item is a resolution to approve the school and library budget vote, election calendar, and designation of polling places for the May 21st, 2013 vote. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. <laughs> At this time, I'd like the board to have a discussion uh, regarding upcoming budget workshops. Um, I did pass this extra handout to all of you. For those people that were at the finance committee, there was a discussion about the possibility of public participation in some form at the budget workshops. So I needed to bring that before all of you uh, for discussion and agreement um, as to whether you wanted to consider that or not, as well as we have listed here tentative dates for the budget workshops. We need to establish a time um, you know, by consensus of us. And also at the finance committee meeting, we asked that um, some sort of statement be written up with our intentions as to what this public participation might look like. So I'm looking for all of you um, for feedback um, to know if this is something that you really want to do, um, if you'd like to make changes in regards to the um, wording of, of what goes out on the district's website about the participation of the public in these meetings, as well as determining a time for these meetings. So I'll open it up to anyone that would like to make comments. Yes, Ms. Resch. What would um, finance, would, we were discussing 6.30, I think, right? So people could have time to eat and then come, or? I think we were discussing 5, 5.30, and 6, and then we decided it would probably be 5.30 or 6. I know it wasn't 6.30. <laughs> we had it late enough that um, you know, the public would be able to, to be there. <coughs> Mr. Levenstein. I think it is good that you're opening it up for a, a portion of, of the meeting so the public can, can make recommendations or suggestions. I'll read um, what you know has been prepared and again if we want to tweak this at all certainly we can but just to give um, the community an idea of what we had in mind the board would reserve a half hour at the end of each session the sessions would run for two hours so it would be an hour and a half of the board's discussion as we've always done at budget workshops leaving the last half hour um, set aside for public input to positively suggest ways of reducing the budget. These suggestions should also be in written form 
and sent in to the district clerk for review by the staff and the Board of Education. Uh, you can contact the district clerk as will allow those requesting to speak on a first come, first serve basis. This will not be a time to voice concerns about possible cuts. We truly understand that any reduction will have an impact on our district. However, it is our charge to follow the guidelines set up by the New York State laws regarding the property tax cap. To voice your concern regarding cuts, you may still do so at the regular scheduled monthly board meetings under the public discussion on non-agenda items. So um, that opportunity will remain the same. This opportunity was really to get input on solutions for <coughs> the um, budget crisis that we are currently facing in the district and actually all across New York State. You said it would start at 5 o'clock, 5.30? Five five, well, 5.30 or 6, depending on, on the wishes of everyone. I have no problem. What time? Pardon? What time do you well, recommend? I'd say 5.30. Smack the feet. Good. I would rather say 6. Okay. Because I think it would allow more people you know, to, to get there. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a problem. I, I, I'm also, you know, I keep coming back to uh, the first line of, this, 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 I guess it would be the second paragraph, where it says input to positively suggest ways of reducing the budget. I think this is a time where we might not all agree mm -hmm. on what's positive and what's not. <laughs> so I wonder who's going to be the arbitrator of that. Uh, you know, because uh, this is a time for out of the box thinking. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it might strike me or you. Um, we could, we could certainly just take that word out and say public input to suggest ways of reducing the budget. I would be, I think it's a more reasonable way of stating it because your first reaction might be, oh, you know, that would never work, but maybe when you reflect on that, it might be considered. Mr. Levenstein? If I'm picking a time, I would say six. Ms. Prokash? Mr. Howard? Six Mr. Yes, I think six o'clock will allow a lot more of our people to get here. <coughs> okay. So six o'clock. The first budget workshop will be on Thursday, February 7th. The remaining dates we currently have scheduled are Thursday, February 21st, Thursday, March 7th, Thursday, March 21st, Tuesday, April 9th, and Thursday, April 25th. First meeting will be held here um, in this auditorium. And then as we go on, if we're finding that we're getting a lot of attendance, uh, as we have in the past, we will we do have approval from the NFA main auditorium to use that space as needed. But the first one on Thursday, February 7th, will be held here in this auditorium. Does anyone uh, else have any further suggestions in regards to this is all going to be public um, on the website and getting this information out so the community knows about this. Does anyone else have any other um, input or change suggestions for mm -hmm. the statement? <coughs> yes. Yes, Mr. Woodhull. Um, I think we just have to make sure that the public is aware of what is mandated by the state. And I know Mike always starts out with that statement, but I think we've got to be very sure public understands exactly what we are responsible for and what we can do something about by what the real budget is and what we control, not what the state is telling us the 78 Right, I was going to say, you mean the percentage of the budget <laughs> that's under our control? So, 74, we get 26%? We there's, there's no hard and fast calculations for the percentage that they provide for the budget. But if you're asking for a list of mandated programs 
and grade levels to be put on that, that list is quite comprehensive and it's a few pages long. And I think it was put together by BOCES. I could try to get a copy and put it on. Yes, Mr. Lawson. As opposed to taking a copy, could we provide a link to the BOCES site? I don't think it's listed on the BOCES site. We were asked, districts were asked by uh, our representatives in the state to provide a, a list of mandated programs that they mandated. And I think BOCES had compiled it from the districts over what was mandated, because some districts are mandated to do certain things differently than all the other districts. But I don't think it's listed on their website, but I'll certainly check. And then we could leave um, a copy of that in the board clerk's office so that anyone from the public wishing to view that would have that opportunity and then we can maybe look to, um, even if we have to scan the document in perhaps, to get it up on the website so that um, the community would have access to review that. Also in the past, um, Mr. Pacello, I believe that we um, had a link for making suggestions if you because uh, we've never had this opportunity before to come to the budget workshop and make suggestions. But I think we continue with the link um, as another vehicle for the community to make suggestions um, as to how we might reduce the budget. Yeah, we'll add that section to the budget section on the website. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this? Go ahead, Ms. Resch. Can we engage security again? <laughs> we can have security at our meetings. Yes, absolutely. I still get a little nervous. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Resolution A is to approve facilities project change orders associated with the two projects. Valesgate Renovation Project 1 and 2, Gardner Town Renovation Project, and FA North Renovation Project. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution B, approved facility use request, Mr. Velez. Thank you, Mr. Piso. Tonight we only have one request from the Town River Little League. They use Melody School every year for the start of their season. They come in with the coaches. The building is open on the same day for uh, indoor soccer. They have all their insurance requests. I know the paperwork is in order. They were told about the new fee that we established with the board policy, and they accept that. So we're presenting this for approval tonight. Can I have a motion? Second. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Check. Yes. That concludes this section of resolutions, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pinto. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. Item A is the recommendations from the Committee on Special Education. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item B is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with the Mid-Hudson Regional Information Center to purchase RTIM direct services. Funding, 
source is the IDEA Part B, Section 611, the IC. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Brokaw. Yes. Ms. Resch. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. <coughs> Item C is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a consultant agreement with Putnam Northern Westchester Bosies. Funding source is IDEA Part B, Section 611. I have a motion. No Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? No. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. I have these a resolution to approve Hammond member appointments for the Committee on Special Education. Can I have a motion? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? No. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. I have ease a resolution to authorize the board president to execute a consultant agreement with Lois Tannenbaum. The funding source is a general fund. I have a motion? So Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Oh, sorry, Ms. Prokash. I just had a question. Um, you said the period the, for the consultation for the period of July 1st, 2012 to June 2013. So this person's been doing this already? No, she hasn't. She, so, would, she would be starting um, as soon as there is an approval by the board. But if she started as soon as it is approved, there's four months there that she hasn't been here. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Yes, yeah, she hasn't. She hasn't started providing services. So should the services be from when she starts yeah. to the end? Uh, June 30th, maybe prorated. I mean, this is for the from July to June at a, at a cost. Mm -hmm. If she's not started to February, it should be not that amount of money, correct? Yeah. Uh, I believe that what's going to happen is that she's going to be paid as services are provided, but the, the date can be brought to February 1st. But if that, as the question is, Dr. Noriega, if that amount was supposed to cover from, say, February 1st until June 30th, then we should amend the resolution to say that. If that amount was actually to cover July 1st to June 30th, then there's only a portion of that amount available from February 1st to June 30th. The, um, the, the correct amount is 10, and for the correct, the correct period would be February 1st to the end of June, because it charges by the hour. Okay. So, Mr. Lawson. I think one of the things that might have been some cloud is what is the rate, because it does say not to exceed $10,000, which means it could be something less than $10,000. It's $100 an hour. Okay. So, that really, so well, we still have to amend the resolution to change the, for the period of February. You want it February 1st, Dr. Noriega? February 1st would be fine. So, can I have a motion to amend this resolution to read for the period of February 1st? 2013 to June 30th, 2013. Second. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Now, can I have a motion on the resolution as amended? Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. The next item 
have is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute a consultant agreement with Jeffrey Rubin. And the funding source is the general fund. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Walton? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Rokosh? Yes. Mr. Fresh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Lucia? Yes. That concludes my item, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moriega. Our next item on the agenda is from the Executive Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would like to add item E to the agenda. I have a motion to add resolution E to the agenda. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. Item A is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools <coughs> to execute an agreement with to purchase microscopes for secondary science classrooms. And the funding source is school district management efficiency. I have a motion. Sorry. Questions or comments? We, Mrs. McAfee. Yeah, uh, Dr. Shanahan, we had some questions last week and you were away for training, okay. Uh, we wondered, you know, what happened to the old microscopes? And what will be done with them mm -hmm. when the new ones come in? Mm -hmm. uh, many of them are uh, in a pretty bad state of disrepair. Uh, there are some that are functioning relatively well, and we're in uh, conversations with the middle schools to see if um, they have a need and they can uh, they could use them. Um, the overall condition of the microscope the they're pretty much from the 1960s. Um, so even if they are, some of them are still functioning there, they don't have a long life left. Dr. Shanahan, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm from way before you know, the 1960s. Yeah, and there's a lot of life left in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I would and I would like to add my two cents. I started teaching in the sixties. If those microscopes were around then, I'm sure they're worn out by now. Yeah, we, we really are trying to salvage the ones that, that we can and and use them uh, in the middle schools. Um, but really they are they're well, I was gonna say they're on their last legs, but I won't say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that that was sort of where our, our mm -hmm. question was, mm -hmm. yeah, were these replacements? Were, replacements. Yeah, were we starting a new program? Mm -hmm. and that was, no, they're replacements. Okay. Yeah. But we will make use of it. Absolutely. With the ones we can? Yes. And Dr. Shanahan, approximately how many microscopes does this sum of money get? Oh, I don't have that with I can get it to you. I don't have that with me. We got a good deal. Um, <laughs> uh, that's what you're asking. Not, not if we got 10 new microscopes, we didn't. <laughs> no, no, no. Any other? Yes, Ms. Brokash. Yeah, yes, the funding source is through a grant. Any other questions or comments? Just follow-up? Yes, I'm not that, that, that I think that items like this, if they come to the curriculum committee first, we can ask those questions and, and have a better understanding then when, when we do go. Yes, Mr. Lawson. Yeah, I, I think all, I mean, just as a follow-up to you, I'd like to know what I, don't, I, I mean, this is a this is a, a small sum. Per, right, per microscope. Per, per, and I don't know how many microscopes there are. And I, this, Dr. Shannon has an impeccable reputation, but. I mean, I feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. only without knowing exactly what, 
what we're talking about. Is it a thousand dollars per microscope? Is it a thousand microscopes? I don't know. So I, I, that's my feeling. Uh, so this is left to vote. Um, was this subject to a competitive bid process? Is there a deadline on accepting it because it's a bid? No, there wasn't. I can get I, I can get the information. So so there wouldn't be a particular problem tabling this in case the board wanted to uh, have a special meeting within a few weeks or something. Would it? Go ahead, well, Dr. that would just mean a delay in purchasing the microscopes. Um, motion to uh, table this resolution. Okay, roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchin? Yes. Item B is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Rubicon West Incorporated. The funding source is Curriculum Development uh, Supply General Fund. I have a motion. Oh, Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Rokosh? Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Item C is a resolution to approve an overnight field trip to Black Rock Forest for NFA students. The funding source is the Sherpa Club, student activities, parent donations, and general fund. Oh. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item D is a resolution to approve conference requests. I have a motion. I move. Second. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. And Mr. Forget will um, uh, add, will discuss item B. Item B is a resolution to approve con consultant agreement with CASA, Capital Area School Development Association. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Yes, Mrs. McAfee. Could I ask that this be tabled in the executive session? I have a motion to table this item. Further discussion in executive session? So moved. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Beeson? Yes. <coughs> and that concludes the items. From Thank you, Dr. Thank Shanahan. You. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Business. Thank you, Madam President. First item is a resolution to authorize the awarding of the 2012 13 Winter Athletic Transportation Bid. I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? <coughs> Item B is a resolution to declare equipment and supplies obsolete and authorize disposition of the same. I have a motion. So Second. Questions or comments? Roll 
roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. And Ms. Kuchak? Yes. Item C is a resolution to increase the 2012-2013 general fund from a donation by a community member. I have a motion. Questions or comments? Roll <coughs> call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item D is a resolution to increase the 2012-2013 Special aid fund from a donation by the New Windsor PTO for the purpose of the new playground. So move. Can I have a <laughs> Okay, can I have a motion? Mr. Uh, Howard and Mr. Long. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item E is a resolution to establish the finalized non-resident tuition rates for the 2011-2012 school year. Can I have a motion? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item F is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with the Carolyn Frank Beyond the Education Center at Leakin Watt Services Incorporated to provide education services for the 2012-13 school year. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. So. I believe it was in the uh, packet from the workshop that was discussed. It's for the residential placement of a student. Okay. 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 I can I can uh, supply it if you need. Dr. Marie, yeah. I have I have the packet. contract was in the workshop packet, so I know my workshop packet's in the other room. <laughs> it you know, it was in the work, I know the amount was in the workshop packet, so if you want Mr. Lawson, I'd be happy to go get it. Mr. Lawson, would you feel more comfortable if we, but since we're going into executive session and may take further action, would you feel more comfortable if we go back, we can get the amount, because I have my workshop packet back in the other room, and we could vote after the executive session? Okay. Can I have a motion to table this item? So moved. Roll call. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Maxey? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Redge? Yes. Ms. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item J G is a resolution to authorize payment of property tax refunds pursuant to court orders. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Pocock? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item H is a resolution to establish the estimated non-resident tuition rates for the 2012-2013 school year. Okay. I have a motion. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? 
Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Oh. Check. Yes. Item I is a resolution to accept the monthly bills and reports. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions and comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. <coughs> Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kucha? Yes. Madam President, I'd like to add resolution J as a donation. Resolution. Can I have a motion to add resolution J to the agenda? So moved. Second. Roll call? Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. I'll read the resolution. Be resolved that the board hereby accepts the donation in the amount of $30,000 from Friends of Newburgh Crew. Be used for the purpose of funding the Boys and Girls Varsity Crew Teams for the 2012-13 school year, which amount is determined to be sufficient to fund both teams. I'm in receipt of a check for that amount, as well as a letter. Dear board members of the Newburgh and Large City School District, the board and members of Friends of Newburgh Crew Incorporated are presenting this check in the amount of $30,000 to the Newburgh and Large City School District as a donation to cover the cost of the 2012-2013 NFA Varsity Crew Team. We ask that you accept this donation with its sole purpose being to fund the above mentioned crew team. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? I have uh, just something that I want to speak to the board about before we uh, go on with this. The um, contract with the district currently has a um, head coach and two assistant coaches for the crew team. And that was decided after um, much discussion and, and cutting of other um, assistant coaches and so on and so forth. And with regards to the numbers of students on the team and um, safety as far as around the water and that type of stuff, um, the Board of Education decided last year that they would cut one um, assistant coach, but it would remain a head coach and two assistants. To this date, um, those positions have been posted and only one person has responded to the assistant coach position. There's been a response for the head coach and there's been a response for one of the assistant coach positions. Um, I've been asked by the friends of the Newburgh crew team if the board would consider a volunteer doing that second assistant position. Um, it has gone back to personnel. The posting has been put out again um, for a second assistant coach. And I would like to know the board's feelings if there is no response to this second assistant coach to the posted position, if the board would consider a qualified volunteer to be put in that position. What yes, Mr. Levinson. Do you see any problem with that, Mr. Shaw? If the volunteer is qualified and there's no bargaining unit member who comes forward, I don't see a difficulty with it. Mr. Levinson? Uh, I don't have any issue with it, and I don't have one of two kids on the board with that team, so I, I, I know the person that would be willing to volunteer, and I know he's more than qualified. Um, the uh, closing date is sometime next week, so we'll see if there's any response from any of our unit board members, and um, if not, then, then we'll let the, um, the board of the Newburgh, uh, friends of the Newburgh uh, crew team know. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this resolution? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? 
Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pasella. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. On the Human Resources agenda, items A through L, we have on the professional side a rescission of an appointment, an appointment, home teacher appointments, change of location, leave of absence, return from leave of absence, resignation and retirements. And on the civil service side, we have appointments, change of location, change of status, retirements, and former and current employees who passed away. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Lewis. I would like item C to be separated out from the rest. And I have a motion to separate item C from the human resources agenda. So we would be voting on everything except item C. And I'll take a second motion for item C. So moved. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Colcott? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Can I have a motion on resolutions A through L, excluding item C? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Ms. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Ms. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. And I have a motion on Resolution C from the Human Resources Agenda. Uh, questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? No. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? No. Ms. McAfee? No. Ms. Prokosh? No. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item carried. Resolution M is a resolution to approve professional change in status. I have a motion. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? No. <coughs> Ms. McAfee? No. Ms. Brokosh? Um, no. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Motion carried. Resolution N is to extend the probationary appointment of an administrator. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution O is to approve after school program appointments. Do you have a motion? I will move. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution P is to amend the contract agreement with Cheryl Bavone. I have a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? No. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Kuchik? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? No. Ms. Kuchik? Yes. Resolution Q is to approve 
approve the 12-13 spring athletic coaching appointments. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Bokoff? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchet? Yes. There's a revised resolution R on the table this evening. The, resolu the revised resolution is to create temporary positions, one full-time equivalent program facilitator for school improvement, and the correction, the revision is two full-time equivalent instructional coaches. <coughs> motion? No. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Reddy? Yes. Ms. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution S is to create a half-time uh, account clerk position. I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Reg? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution T is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a supplemental memorandum of agreement with the CSEA. This is the agreement that establishes the summer school rates for CSEA employees. I have a motion. Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution U is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a supplemental memorandum of agreement with the Newburgh Teachers Association. This is the agreement that establishes girls to ladies as a program as opposed to a club. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution B is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a settlement agreement with employee number 3531. This is the settlement agreement that um, withdraws a grievance with the Newburgh Teachers Association um, and settles that grievance with an employee for the lack of prep time. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Ms. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchet? Yes. Resolution W is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with employee number 3740. This is the settlement agreement which allows for a retirement incentive for a civil service employee. I have a motion. So moved. Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution X is the resolution to adopt the 2013-2014 district calendar. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution Y is to approve the tenure recommendation for teachers. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? 
Yes. And Resolution Z is for your information only. It's the upcoming tenure recommendations for an administrator and a teacher. And that concludes my items. Thank you, Mrs. Langer. I just have a question. Um, it's for you and Mr. Pacella. We also, when we were talking about the girls to ladies and what got settled with them, we were talking about the fencing club as well and what might be resolved with that. Um, did we determine if there were any other expenses beyond the stipend for that position? No. There no, are no other expenses. And so I guess, Mr. Shaw, the question is, would they have to, they have asked if they could donate the money the way that the crew team donated the money. Um, since it's $2,500 compared to a lot more, do they have to form a 5013C organization or could that don't, what would be the appropriate venue for how that donation would be done? It's just a matter of the district receiving the monies and um, that team is a co-ed team. Does anybody know? Yes. Okay, then there shouldn't be a Title IX issue on that. So it would be okay to um, contact um, that group and let them know that if they raise the money, they could simply make a donation. Oh, that's right, and you wouldn't advise them of any tax consequences. You'd just be receiving the money. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Langer. Well, Our next item on the agenda is from the clerk of the board. Thank you, Madam President. I have four items from approval of meeting minutes, the special meeting of December 11, 2012, the regular meeting of December 18, 2012, and the special meetings of January 10th and 22nd of 2013. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Ms. Lawson? Yes. Ms. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Ms. Ruival? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. That concludes my item, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Our next item on the agenda is public discussion and comment on non agenda items. I have one name here, and after that, anyone wishing to speak on non-agenda items should step to the podium and give their name and address. First, we will hear from Mr. Art Plickton. Good evening, my name is Art Plickton, and I am president of the Newburgh Teachers Association. Stacy Moran, head delegate at the high school, and I had the opportunity to attend the American Federation of Teachers Center for School Improvement this past weekend, from Thursday to Sunday. It was an extremely positive and worthwhile experience. Teams from all over the country participated. Some already had very dynamic labor management partnerships, and some were trying to reach positive collaborations between labor and management in their district. And all with the goal of improving student achievement. It was apparent from the conference that many challenges we are facing in Newburgh are felt in the rest of the country. What was remarkable was the shared sense of ownership of the problems and the desire of all parties to work together to find solutions which they could all embrace. As two members of the NTA, Stacy and I were only one piece of the puzzle. I hope that next year, it happens in January and it was cold, uh, that we can have a large team of teachers, administrators, board and central office participants able to contribute to that discussion at the Center for School Improvement and work to form a unified action plan that has us all working together to facilitate student learning and a cohesive implementation of the common core. Change does not happen overnight and the perspective of the marathon runner is much more helpful 
than that of the sprinter in the pursuit of shared vision. We are all in this together, and we all have a vested interest in making sure we do the best for our students. They should not only have the opportunity to dream their dreams, but actually achieve those dreams. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Plinkham. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on that agenda item? Grace Bowles, Newburgh, New York. I just want to talk about a few issues. I attended the diversity committee meeting and it was explained that under the guidance of the New York of New York University, you were creating a district-wide team to help teachers understand how to deal with the 70% of students that walk through the doors on a daily basis. The purpose of the team would be to go back to their school, develop a team, I believe, and give help to those teachers that just do not understand colored students. And I use colored students simply because that is what I heard one of your teachers say the other day. One board member asked at this meeting, was this just lip service or was there a plan to be implemented? There was basically no definitive answer. So to that I say, if there were more minority teachers and administrators, there would be less of a problem. Also, this plan could not be implemented at Foster Town School because there are no African-American personnel, not even a custodian. Maybe there is by now, I don't know. Maybe that has changed. The second thing that I want to say is that you have this evaluative process that teachers follow. Uh, the initials are APPR and SLO. You have, you have where you're gonna ask teachers to decide after four weeks whether or not a student will fail. Now, the teacher only has general information about that student when they enter. So they have the name, they have the address. If they look at them, they probably can see the nationality. So the teacher comes across Shaniqua or Juan, and they live on Lander Street, right smack in the middle of the ghetto, or Juan, lived, in his case, living in the Heights. So this becomes the t a tool to decide that a student will fail. If teachers were not biased, you now have created a situation that allows them to become biased. So you take ownership of this process. The idea that someone can predict that a student will pass or fail after four weeks shows that you really don't have a clue. And I'm surprised to know that educators on the board would agree with such an action. Rather than directing your teachers, rather than directing your teachers in this way, you should give them skills they need to understand Shaniqua and Quan and Juan. Shaniqua and Juan may be also like Allison and Tom out of Bonneville. Next, we have no African American teachers or personnel at Foster Town School. I know you hear this over and over again. You, know, you have known this for months. I sat in a personnel meeting in which you outlined your efforts to deal with hiring more minorities. You said that the personnel committee would send over the candidates. Well, I know that minorities were interviewed for many positions and these minorities are the same administrators who run your summer school. Yet when it, an administrative position opens, they're not qualified to run your school. Have you seen the way some of your schools are run? You have a principal who has been put on an improvement plan for a second time, yet you tell the blacks, assistant principals, they're not qualified. This person was from the outside. You hired a white woman last, that lasted a few months, yet there were many of the same Yet there were many on the same committee who wanted to hire the male Hispanic. Along the same lines, you hired a black administrator for heritage, but on Facebook, you went on Facebook and found out something about misappropriation of funds that had nothing to do with her, and you denied her that position. Mm -hmm. 
Yet the former NFA principal, a white woman, you knew that at her school there were some questions about activities surrounding test, test scores, yet you hired her. No one said she did anything. You hired a black woman for curriculum instruction and harassed her to the point that she declined the position. Last and just as important, you knew that South Middle School is largely Hispanic, yet when an assistant principal job came up, you hired a white man. So we have three white people down there running a basically Hispanic school. This just shows your insensitivity to the community. Mrs. Bowles, I apologize, but your five minutes is up. I'd be happy to receive the rest of what you have written there. I've been speaking five minutes. <coughs> Okay, well, thank you. Thank but you. I think you got my point. Thank you, Mrs. Bowles. So anyone else that would like to speak on non-agenda items? Being none, be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose. To discuss the employment history of particular individuals for matters leading to the appointment of particular individuals. The board may take action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Ms. Lawson. Yes. Ms. Levenstein. Yes. Ms. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Brokaw. Yes. Ms. Dress. Ms. Little. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Thank you, everyone. I have one resolution <laughs> for this evening, um, a resolution to approve consultant agreement with Capital Area School Development Associates. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levantine? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prokop? Yes. Mr. Reg? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Lyman. Um, do we need a resolution to remove it from the table? Yeah. Maybe. yeah. So resolution to remove um, item F um, under the assistant superintendent of public to remove that item from the green table. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Resolution F is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Carol and Frank Biondi Education Center at Leak and Watt Services Incorporated to provide educational services for the 2012-2013 school year. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Redd? Yes. Ms. Woodhull? Yep. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. And we would need a resolution to add item AA to the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources agenda items. Can I have Someone. a motion? Second. Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Redd? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Be resolved that the board hereby amends um, the school calendar for this school year by setting the NFA graduation for the evening of June the 26th, 2013, with the weather-related alternative date of the evening of June the 27th, 2013. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchak? Yes. I have a motion to adjourn. So much. Wow. All those in favor? Yeah. Yeah.